Welcome to Sal's Classic Bodybuilding Archives. Today, we take a look at Muscle Mag International from January 1983. The Dennis Tinarino Seminar held at Vic Tanny Nautilus Gym in Toronto, Canada. So who was Dennis Tenorino? He was a golden era bodybuilder and competed starting in the 60s all the way into the 80s. He was an East Coast bodybuilder. He was a Mr. America winner, a NABA Mr. Universe, and he competed several times in the Mr. Olympia contest. He trained and competed with other great champs from the golden era, like Frank Zane, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Boyer Co., Danny Padilla, in many contests. Unfortunately, Dennis passed away from cancer in 2010. Now, let's get into the seminar. First question, how many times a week should I train? It depends on what your goal is and what direction you wish to go. If you're not interested in competing in contests, then three times a week should be enough. If you're after good bodybuilding gains, however, I would say you should train on a four day split routine and then maybe six days, six weeks prior to a contest. On the whole though, I would say there's no one in this room who needs to train more than four days a week. How do you split your routines up? I do my back, chest, biceps, and calves. The second day, I train my legs, shoulders, and triceps. I usually work out on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, covering each body part twice a week. Nearly all of the top bodybuilders in California that I personally know train each body part only twice a week. The only one that I know who needed to train each body part three times a week was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold is by far the hardest training bodybuilder that I know. Can you build muscle mass and definition at the same time? Most definitely. Most bodybuilders use a bulking up program merely as an excuse to get fat. You see, it all depends on the type of food you eat. You should eat as many natural foods as you can. Stay away from fried foods and I wouldn't recommend a tremendous amount of dairy products. That in conjunction with a four-day split routine should give you the kind of results you want. Are the routines and articles you read about in the Weeder magazines true? Well, the articles that have appeared about me are certainly true because I wrote them myself. As far as the rest of the articles go, yes, they are true because they are either written by the bodybuilder himself or dictated to a writer. Personally, I want to help as many guys as I can. Do you believe in protein drinks? At the stage I'm at right now, I personally don't need to take any, but I would say that the average type of bodybuilder should consume protein drinks. You can put a lot more into a blender than you could get from solid food. You can put in eggs, fresh fruit, protein powder, and ice. This will give you all the needed nutrients without bloating your stomach from too much solid food. What is the best protein supplement on the market? I think that the milk and egg protein is probably the best that you can take in your system. Should you mix raw eggs with your protein drink? Well, I'll tell you, if you mix up raw eggs, you are missing the one essential thing which is called biotin. Actually. Raw eggs are not good for the body because they cannot be assimilated properly. Bill Pearl used to cook his eggs for about two minutes before mixing them with his protein drink. Do you drink milk? No, I don't. I don't take any dairy products at all because they smooth me out. Even if I take non-fat milk, I still smooth out. What's your opinion of training to failure? Well. Arnold was the first to come out with the sayings, no pain, no gain. You've got to train past the burn and pain barrier training, etc. I don't particularly believe in all that. 
I believe that the bodybuilder who is going to gain is the bodybuilder who is consistent and does it over a period of time. Basically, bodybuilding takes a lot of time, patience, and perseverance. If I had a low energy day, and when I got to the gym, I found that I didn't have the enthusiasm for a good workout, then I would just do half of my workout, maybe just enough to get the blood flowing and stretch the muscles. The muscles will grow in time, but you can't gain if you're overtrained. What is the best training system? Well, I'll tell you, there's no one best system. Bodybuilding today is enjoying more popularity than at any time. I've just returned from a trip to Europe, South Africa, South America, and places I can't even remember. The enthusiasm is amazing. As well as many different training systems, we have many different types of apparatus as well. We have barbells, dumbbells, nautilus, universal, and many others. What you have to realize is that the muscles soon get used to a particular exercise or system. So you must try different things. Maybe the Mike Menser system of low sets, heavy weights is for you. Who knows? The reason why I won the Mr. America at 21 was because from the age of 15, I trained four times a week using fairly heavy weights and low reps. But whenever I encountered a sticking point, I would always change my program around. Do you do any supersets? Yeah, sometimes. Supersets are good to promote a quick pump, and they are good if you want muscularity. It is not a good thing to stay on supersets all the time because you cannot use enough weight to keep yourself growing. I think the same thing applies to the heavy duty system of training. Over a long period of time, I think this method could be bad for your nervous system. And it's probably only good for the big guys who are carrying a lot of tissue to begin with. However, I don't agree with a lot of people who say heavy duty doesn't work. It obviously does work for some people. You've got to try it to see if it will work for you. Do you think bench presses are good for chest development? Well, I personally don't do bench presses anymore. I used to do them, but I found that the more my chest was growing, the more I couldn't get my elbows low enough to fill a good stretch. You need dumbbells to stretch your chest properly. Another thing I like to use is the half moon bench, which is fantastic for stretching the pecs. If you do like doing bench presses, I would recommend that you do about five or six sets, working up in weight each set. Do them under constant tension and don't lock out your elbows. What do you think of supersetting bench presses with dumbbell flies? Yes, you can do a set of bench presses and then go straight over to a set of dumbbell flies. I've tried that and got pretty good results from it for a period of time. It's a good way to shock the muscles, but I must honestly say that my biggest and best results come from straight sets. I like straight sets better because I can concentrate on the exercise much more. When you concentrate on a certain thing, you'll be able to progress in that move because you're putting more mental impulses into the movement, utilizing more muscle fibers, and you'll get much more out of it. Whereas, if you superset, you're constantly thinking about the next exercise. You won Chet Yorton's Mr. Natural America contest last year. Just how effective is the drug test? Some guys say, as long as they stay off the drugs for two weeks, you'll pass the test. Well, I'm not too well attuned to the chemical aspects of the drug testing, but I know that it can test you for thyroids, etc. Whether it can go back for two weeks or four weeks, I don't know. What I do know is that after only four weeks off steroids, a bodybuilder will lose all the development he gained while on the drugs. So, even if it is only for a period of two weeks, he will still probably lose 25% of all the gains he has made from steroids. The test is fairly reliable though, and it's the same test they use on the Olympic weightlifters at the Olympic Games. 
In the future, I think you will see bodybuilders taking less and less steroids, and I hope I'm right about this. Well, thank you for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed today's read. Please leave a like, leave a comment, and please subscribe. And until next time, keep training.